I want your movie release date slice. I oh. want this face on your slice. You Enjoy want that, your face on movie release dates? See, what happens is you have to earn that. We're gonna challenge you, yeah. and we're gonna get hey, movie Howard, release dates. Hey, Coward, you got dates. a real hero. That Sunday, face does not document. belong on movie but, release. But. He's gonna keep it. He's gonna keep oh, it. Oh, I love it. The slice, it's gonna be mine soon. Movie release dates. What do you got, Sam? Movie release dates. Wow. Movie release wow. dates. I think I'm losing my hair. I can't believe this freaking job has just destroyed everything I held dear. You're a real mess, kid. Ah! Look. How did you... How did what? I, I locked the door. Come on now. It's been a year. You're not used to this by now? Yeah. But what a year it's been. It's been, I would say, spectacular, wouldn't you? And it all capped off recently with your big, your big Darth Vader moment. I love that you're like, no, against me. And guess what? It's all coming down to this, my friend. You remember this, don't you? Remember this? So I got it right here. Ah, ah. It's right here. This is your way out, my friend. This, friend, this is your golden ticket. So if I give this to you, you're gonna be like, touch that again, I'm gonna break your hand. You touch this again. But I wanna give it to you, though. I okay. wanna give it to you, because then you take it, and you're gonna be like, I got a golden ticket. I got a golden ticket. All you gotta do for this, your way out. I'll be out of your hair for good. No more none of this. No more. All you gotta do? Are you listening? You challenge Harlow. No. I, 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 what was that? No. I don't like that. No, that, that's a wussy. You know, I want to. No. If you're gonna say no, say it like that, like a man, like he had some balls before. But here, you're gonna say yes. You're gonna say yes with the biggest smile on your face because I will be out of your hair. All you gotta do is challenge Harlow. It's as simple as that. Just say yes. Go yes. Because if you don't, guess what? The computer with this on, I'm gonna go share. Share, share, retweet, 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 be everywhere. The kids and everyone will have this, all the fans will have this, they'll have the receipts as they call it. Those kids say, I got the receipts on you. But then, you can, I can give this to you. You can do whatever you want with it. Just challenge Harlow. Say yes, because you know what? I want to see more of this. You had your little fun with your no moment. Now I'm going to have my fun, just like always. Go get him. Go get him. Go challenge him. Come on. Come on, Shane. There you go. Get Look like a million bucks now. Look at, look at the smile on your face. I love it. Remember? Yes. I got a golden ticket. I got a golden ticket. I got a golden ticket. <laughs> Ants Ellison, Ethan Irwin, Dan Merle, Stacy Howard, and Draco McQueenie, Ben the Boss Bateman, Clark Wolf. The singles tournament begins. The winner of that entire tournament faces John the Outlaw Roca at the Spectacular. What a battle we're in for. I have never gone up against Roka, and I think that would be a lot of fun. I think Roka is somebody that you kind of have to go up against if you're going to be in the league. Absolutely. It's sort of a rite of passage. I want something. I want red meat. I want a good fight. Make it happen. All right? So you're the what, commissioner. What, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Yeah, just sure, sure, sure. Do it. You are going to play the winner of Lon and Ethan, and then after that match, you will get Roka or Snyder. And your winner, Ethan! Oh. But, uh, but no, it's awesome, and I, I can't wait. I feel like now that I've really started to make a name for myself, I, I've just got to keep moving up the ladder. I, I feel like the next step is the Godfather himself. And your winner, well. ladies and gentlemen, Ethan! Now, you guys also have an Iron Man match coming up against the Patriots. It is really a head-to-head -head knowledge match. It's not about the game anymore. It really comes down to we're just going to trade blows back and forth. And your winner! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
done everything I wanted to do in the Schmodown, okay. there's only one logical step left, and that is to walk away. Walk away with and give up both championships. Give up both belts. Because what's going to happen here is that Bibiani will play the winner of Andrako and Irwin, and that will be our new champion. And your winner! Draco is 3-0 and since joining the Fife Club. He took out Ben Bateman. He beat both Stacey Howard and Janine the Machine, and then he beat Ethan Irwin to earn his spot here today for the championship. And your winner, William the Beast! Singles tournament officially begins. We're done with the gauntlet. Ben Bateman has gotten that eighth spot, and now the tournament of the eight elite begin, Mark. How are you? Oh, Christian, I am doing great because it is playoff season. I love nothing more than the playoffs. And as a Redskins fan, I don't get to enjoy them that much. But here in the movie trivia showdown, we really have a good matchup to kick off this entire format. Oh, this is in, in a lot of different tournaments. This is a semifinal. Shoot, it's a final. It is between two of the elite players of the league. They got matched up. Just That's just the way this tournament ran hey. this year. You have on one side of the bracket, and something you just don't hear often, the underdog, is the former movie trivia showdown team champion of the world, the godfather Drew McWeenie, who is four and three. He has an okay singles record this year. He beat the former team, former champion, William the Beast Bibiani, but lost to rookie sensation Ethan Irwin. He's going up against a longtime friend, but someone who's having a tremendous year in singles and in general this year, and that's the android Mark Andraco. Mark Andraco this year is three and one. He has beaten, he won a triple threat match against Janine the Machine and Stacey Howard. He beat Ben Bateman, who's on a roll right now, and he beat the man who beat McQueenie in Ethan Irwin. His losses, of course, his one loss this year comes, of course, to his rival, the man he just he can't beat, the William the Beast Bibiani, but that's it this year for the android. Yeah, we like seeing friends when they compete. It's a shame that a friendship of a two decades perhaps is going to end here today, but that's, that's the way over. it goes. No, they are not going to like each other no. anymore. They will no longer be exchanging holiday gift cards because it means just that much. The winner of this advances. The loser is out of the tournament. Drew McWeeny, Mark Andreco. You're right. It's odd to see Drew McWeeny going to be sitting on that side of the ledger, but when you go up against the Android, that's what you get. Both are coming off of good performances in the team tournament. Drew McWeeny was partnered up with Brianne Chandler. They made it into the second round. And Draco went into the semifinals with his partner, Jeff the Insider Snyder, and had a nice run there too. So they are both accustomed to winning. This is the last performance of the season for one of these guys. Mm -hmm. The winner will go Get on. Get out of here. Yep, You're the, done. The winner will go on to face the winner of the match between Ben Bateman and Mark Andreco, stablemate of the Five Club. Clark Wolf. But these two, they're going to say some words about each other. We're going to hear them. Here we go. Oh, this is definitely by far the most challenging match I think I've had as a player. Uh, I've, Drew and I have been friends for almost 20 years, and his knowledge, I always say Drew is like me if I was smarter. He knows a lot about so much stuff. And if it's the right, if the categories are right, he can smoke me. Have I accomplished it? I haven't even begun, really. I mean, I, I had the championship belt with Sam for a very brief moment, um, but that's that's certainly not enough. I feel like in the singles, I have been so hit and miss that uh, this this tournament, I 
really got to bear down and I got to really focus. And dude, it's a scary first match. Uh, if I if I plan to get any further, uh, you couldn't have put a bigger obstacle in my way. This has been a pretty good year. I, I was far more active in the competition than I thought I was going to be at the outset. And I've had a pretty good record. I think even though I haven't actually won a belt, I think I'm probably fairly, I'm a pretty consistent performer. Um, that could that could also change on a dime. I'm, way, I'm, I'm overdue for a match where I'm two points to 35. I've known Andrejko long enough, just personally, away from the, the movie trivia showdown for decades now. And uh, he and I come from very similar places and we have very similar bases of knowledge. And so I think on any given day, that wheel spin or that pull of a question is, is you know, I'll be haunted by that free-for-all moment forever. Oh, if I win this whole tournament and I get to play Roka, that's almost as delicious as playing Bibiani again. There would be there would be a lot a lot of fun playing Roka. And and as the last couple of matches I've played, I think I've really gotten into the technique of the game and the psychology of the game. And Roka like Bibs only takes what did the Joker say? Just takes a little nudge to let gravity take. So if I can get to play him, I think I have a good chance because I can get in his head. So here's the thing, Mark. You and I are friends, we'll be friends after this, but I've got to go over you. And so I am, because I, I want to face John Roca. It's one of those matches that I've been waiting for since I joined the league. And now that he's champion, I just have more reason to want it. So I'm sorry, Mark. This is as far as you go. Drew, you're a good friend and a noble competitor. I just hope I don't lose by too many points. Good luck. You know, Christian, I wouldn't even classify that as trash talk. That was more like recyclables. It was nice. It was very complimentary, but they're both focused on going to the next round. They ultimately want to face John Roca. Yeah, I mean, that's what this winner gets. Whoever wins this whole entire tournament gets to face the champion, John Roca. What a pleasure. They get to face him at the Schmodown Spectacular in the main event. And as we already announced, the season premiere of season six is going to be in New York. What? So the, not only the runner, I got to book a ticket. Whoever the champion is, at at that time in New York will be defending the title. So one of these guys could be defending in New York. And the other thing is there's going to be a number one contender match at the Schmodown Spectacular. And whoever wins that will be facing whoever the champion is at New York. So there's a lot at stake inside of this tournament. If you can score enough points, you can be in the number one contender match. If you can become the, at least one of the finalists, the number one contender match. But it is all about trying to get to John Roca at the Spectacular. Uh, two questions. You're a New Yorker. I'm flying in in Newark. Close enough? I'll see if Ken's available. Sounds night. good. My other question is, what is the tale of the tape for these two gentlemen? Tale of the tape, you've got The Godfather, Drew McWeenie, 80s movies, 70s movies, and just staring at you and making you scared. Leaving guns, taking cannolis. And then Mr. Mark, the android and Draco, whose strengths are comic book movies, musicals, and making sure you balance the questions. Oh, <laughs> I think that's the strength of every competitor this season. That's right. Thank you for and, the help. And somewhere I know he's smiling. We appreciate right. your tips. So we, with that, we are ready to get going. Oh, yeah, just speak for me. Fine. We're both ready. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Shmoda. <laughs> Introducing first. With a record of four wins, three defeats, he is the former Movie Trivia Schmodown Team Champion of the World, The Godfather, Drew McQueenie! Hey, Drew. Here Drew comes Drew McQueenie. Confident. Nice acknowledgement of the announcers up here at the desk, uh, waving to the crowd that uh, applauded him lustily. I think it's a pretty good intro for an underdog. He's a big fan favorite. Well, the thing is, underdog by re record. He's an underdog. Nobody thinks he can win today. All right. <laughs> and his opponent, led to the ring by his manager, Emma, the Golden Mike Fife. And the team champion, Rachel the Crusher Cushing, with a record of five wins, three defeats, is Mark the Android and Draco. There's Emma Fire. 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 Emma
the man. Rachel coaching, opening the curve. What a nice handshake. Yeah. I'm just applauding sportsmanship. Andrenko with his who, me? What, yeah. me worry? Michael Jordan hitting five threes in the first half of a finals game. Look right to the camera. I'm just excited to see the Five Club back together. We haven't seen them together since before Anarchy happens. They're standing and we are ready to get going. What is round number one here, Mark? Uh, round number one is going to be eight questions, and they are asked to the field. That means once a competitor hears a question, you can go ahead and use the marker to start writing your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard. I'll remind you all that it is eight different categories of movie trivia knowledge that we will be quizzing you on. Should one of you score a perfect round one, we will be asking a bonus follow-up that is just to you. It, but I guess with the gentlemen up here at the desk, both of them have a pretty good chance at getting perfect rounds. Round number ones. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round one. I'll remind each gentleman of your three usages throughout the three rounds of the match of the JTE rule. If you're not sure you heard a question correctly, you need to repeat it, or you just want to buy yourself some time to think of the correct answer, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to lose. I'm a little nervous because Drew McWeeny has a Coca-Cola up there on the desk, but it looks very warm, and that is gross. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe it fuels him to be even I more pee, scary I than he is. It actually. Did it's, you? it's poison anyway, but at least let's get some ice cold poison. Mark and Draco just went heel. All right, here <laughs> we go. So we are ready to get going. Mark and Draco, are you ready? Sure. McQueenie, are you ready? I am now. Then let's get ready to schmoo now. Lusty crowd here today, Christian. They're excited for the kickoff of the playoffs. Question one in action adventure, gentlemen. Johnny Depp appears as a CIA agent trying to kill a drug lord in which installment of Robert Rodriguez's Mexico trilogy? Have you ever been to Mexico? No, I have not. Uh, I got a Rosarito, I got a Tijuana, and I got a Cancun where I drank Five, Bud Light and went to TGI Fridays. Four. I'm proud of you. Did three. not get the culture, Two. unfortunately. I get you. One. Pens down. Uh, Mark Andrico. Once Upon a Time in Mexico? Yes, sir. McQueenie. Uh, that would be Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Tie game. All right. We move on. <laughs> So your next category is the world of comedies, haha. -ha. Your question is, Jim Carrey plays a character by the name of Fletcher Reed in what 90s classic comedy? So I would like to go to Cabo San Lucas in Mexico because that's where Sammy Hagar celebrates his birthday every year. I'd like to watch Lucas again. Five, <laughs> four, so, pivotal three. Pivotal question as it turns Yeah, out. two, one, Drew McQueenie. I believe it is Liar Liar. You'd be correct. Mark and Draco. Liar Liar. Tie game. <laughs> they ain't lying. <laughs> yeah. uh. Dramas. Dramas. Who played med student Skyler in Good Will Hunting? Uh, you ever seen that Good Will Hunting? Very many yeah. shows. Yeah. Many, many shows. <laughs> Very many shows. Very many shows. <laughs> You're working on your response Five. timing. And it's working on my spoons. You're really Four, pushing it. <laughs> three. <laughs> Two. Collider live. One. Pants <laughs> down, please. And Mark and Draco. Mini driver? Yes, sir. And be many drivers. tie game, here we go. All right, both competitors flicking the jab early, feeling each other out. Your next question comes from the world of animated movies. They're either drawn by hand or more likely on a computer. Your question is, who directed the 2004 film The Polar Express? I uh, have never seen this one, although I hear the kids love it. That's not true. They like the book. Five. <laughs> Four. All kids, kids. Kids Three. read? Yeah. Two. I thought they just watch YouTube videos. One. Drew McQueenie. With the assist of Dark Sorcery, that would be Robert Zemeckis. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and Mark Andreco. Robert Zemeckis. We are tied, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Four, four. Perfect rounds through half. And these two titans keep on going. Here we go. Fantasy sci-fi. Which 2000 sci-fi film stars Killian Murphy, Chris Evans, Rose Byrne, and Michelle Yeoh? It's the 2000s. Yeah, so any day. Yeah, but you, you, you led right into the sci fi. Yeah. You were like, what's 2000 sci fi? They got it. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark Andreco. Sunshine? Yes, and McQueenie. Sunshine. Five, wow. Five. Okay. I, like I thought it. that might be the toughie in round number one, so we could be looking at two perfect rounds. Your next question comes from the world of 1980s movies. And your question is Who played vampire leader David in The Lost Boys? The groan from the crowd. It is the first round, everybody. Man, the crowd. Yeah. Everybody Five, thinks three, that they four, can just be up there right, and answer three. these questions. I wish I had those questions. Yeah. Two, one. <laughs> I'm right here, Christian. <laughs> no, that's, that's what I'm saying. They're saying. Pen, uh, uh. Pens down. Pens down, please. And Drew McQueenie. Uh, that would be... Kiefer Sutherland. Yes, it is. Kiefer Sutherland. 6-6. Six, six. He's a great actor and even better at throwing himself into an Icelandic Christmas tree. The next question 
is in the realm of horror slash thriller. That was for RB3. What is the name of the murderer whose soul is bonded to a Chucky doll in Child's Play? Uh, do you believe that uh, like a doll could be possessed? Because I kind of do. Have you ever seen old ventriloquist dummies? Oh, I've seen it happen in my living room. Wait, what? Five. It's scary. This just turns on for no reason. Four. Three. Really? Two. We're garden tools. <laughs> Pen down, please. And uh, Mark and Draco. Charles Ray Evans? No. And I don't think I have it right either. Billy Ray Lee. Oh! Both combined. Mm. Charles Lee Ray. Charles Lee Charles Ray. Ray. Charles Lee and, Ray. And out the door, the perfect way goes. <laughs> okay, and no perfect rounds. Hey, no. we save a question, but they each have one more question to go <laughs> in round number one. It's your last category, and it is a Patreon question. Charles Thanks to all the Lee, movie trivia showdown Patreons. We support each and every one of you for your patronage. The following question comes to us via Jonathan. Peck. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for being such a loyal Schmodown Patreon contributor. And he wanted the category of Steven Spielberg Films, the hack that made a shark movie. Here's your question. Who plays the title character of the BFG in the movie The BFG? I really uh, like that movie. I still haven't seen it. I thought we saw it together. No. I, I, wait. I saw some. Five. <laughs> Did you leave? Four. Did I offend you? Yeah, at the end. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Drew McQueenie. I am so offended I don't remember the gentleman's name. Oh, oh boy. I was going to write he won an Oscar for Bridge of Spies. Oh, yeah. 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 Which is correct, but you can't get yeah. the other. Looking Mark for Rylance. Just Mark, Mark Rylance. Rylance. Damn it. He of course it is. Of course it is. He <laughs> robbed that old boxer <laughs> of a statue. Yeah. All right. That's because you're a BFG, a big fucking geek. All right. <laughs> Round two now starts. We are tied up. Mark Andreco and Drew McQueenie are tied up at six. Both played a tremendous first round, both missing the same questions. Attached to the hip right now, these two are. As we get to round number two, Mark, how does that work? The best of friends still, soon to be bitter enemies from here to four. The wheel round is upon us. The wheel of fate, doom, justice, and a sponsored wheel today. I mentioned the movie Trivia Schmode on Patreon. Today's wheel is sponsored by none other than Kyle Gerbrandt. Thank you so much, Kyle. His slices today are Scorsese Films and Stanley Kubrick Films. He he likes himself some directors. Now, that wheel is out there. It's got 10 different movie categories, including Kyle's two picks. Also, a spinner's choice and what every competitor dreads, opponent's choice. Each one of y'all is going to get one spin at the wheel. If you don't like the category you spin, you do have one mulligan. You may spin again, at which point you have to answer four questions from said category. Each question is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is correct. If you get that one right, you get one point. Keep in mind both competitors. Stealing is available in round number two. Will Thievery and Sue Christian George. Now, both have their JTU rules and both have their challenges. Yes, they do. Mark Andreco does come in with a higher rank this tournament. So, Mark, would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. You're going to go first. Please spin from the wheel oh. and not the peg, please. He's going to go first. Spinning from the wheel. Grab that wheel. He's, He's lining yeah, it up. Yeah, He's, He's like he would line up a putt at yeah. the U.S. Open. He's aiming for musicals. He's not looking. He's not looking. Spinning it. He can't even look at no, it. I mean, this wheel, is, this wheel tortures people. Yeah. It tortures The wheel people. gets into their heads yeah, like Charles spin. Lee Ray got into that Chucky doll. Uh-oh. It's going to go past it? Is it's going to pass the point of choice. Oh, look at this. Worry about that. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Thrillers. 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 Would you like Thrillers. to take the famous 1983 Michael Jackson album? No, Mark and Draco was just a part of that. You're going to take it, which yeah. makes sense. Mark and Draco just big he part of that Patreon horror match. Going to take it. Which is available now on Patreon if you want to see it. It was a, it was a fatal five-way for the horror match. Okay, fatal here we go. five-way makes sense in the world of horror. All right, here we go. In the category of thriller, who plays Vincent Gray, who is the junkie that shoots Bruce Willis in The Sixth Sense? Donnie Wahlberg. For two points. Okay. We were looking for a Donnie Wahlberg. Question two. What is the name of the main antagonist of the Saw series? Jigsaw. That's correct. Uh, Johnny Depp plays a rare book dealer who, while seeking out the last two copies of a demon text... The Ninth Gate. Correct. Wow. All right. And Rudely didn't even let you finish the question. All right. And your last question here. Who plays the villainous Ray Marcus, leader of the murderous rednecks in Nocturnal Animals? 
Oh, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. For two points. Mark wow. and Draco Cleaning blazing up. through that like Sherman and it's blazed over. through Atlanta. That, and that round is over. So now Drew McWeeny is up. Drew, Drew, please spin from the wheel, not the peg. Here and comes we, Drew McWeeny. First spin for and Drew McWeeny. here it goes, Christian. He's staring right at the wheel. And Draco couldn't look at it. McWeeny staring daggers into it. Staring at it because he... Shut up, Sam. The rule, the, the luck that this guy has had so far with the wheel this year has been... Unbelievable. He's got to be looking for, he's not going to get 80s. Yeah. He could get. Oh, famous actors famous and actresses. Actors and actresses. Going to keep it. All right. And he merely shrugs. <laughs> he merely it. shrugs. He doesn't fear any category in the movie so, trivia schmodown. All right, here you, you can't. go. You can't. Here we go. Famous actors and actresses. Drew, these are actors and actresses of some repute. Your first question. What is the first Wes Anderson film to feature Bill Murray? Rushmore. That's correct. Give him two points. <laughs> Give him two points. The crowd applauds. We move on to your next question. In the romantic adventure Robin and Marion, Sean Connery played Robin Hood. But who played the role of Lady Marion? Audrey Hepburn. Two more points for Drew McQueenie. <laughs> All right. The warm Coke doing him wonders thus far. <laughs> your next question. Oh, you meant the soda. Oh, it's the secret. <laughs> what classic Hollywood actor's real name was Marion Morrison? Shares a birthday with me, John Wayne. That is correct. You are uh, wow. right, partner. Nice. That is not at all a John Wayne. That's more of a Bostonian. <laughs> My apologies. We'll move on. That's when he was in Goodwill Hunting. Yep. <laughs> so Mark and Draco <laughs> holding on to two point, but here's McQueenie's last question. And them apples have given you... This final question. Who voiced the title character in 2010's Marmaduke? Uh, five. Multiple choice. Uh, is it A, Jack Black, B, Jim Carrey, C, Owen Wilson, or D, Mike Myers? I think it's C. Owen Wilson. You Correct. think correctly. Wow. One wow. point lead here by Andreka. What how a many, round by How Polk many people turned down right. that round? Wow. What a round, Robin two. And, Marion, and that's it. That's the game. Andreka wins, right? Andreka wins. Wow. Andreka's done? That is not the case. We are going to round three with these two, and what a match it's been so far. Mark Andreko, Drew McWeenie, 14 13 as we get into the <laughs> third round. All right. How's it work, Mark? Round number three. I hope both you gentlemen enjoy round three because this is the last round you will ever play play as friends. Yeah. You will each give us three numbers. Those numbers can range from 1 to 20. Each number corresponds to a different category of movie trivia know-how up here at the answer desk. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Your next one, three points. Your last one, should we make it that far? Five-point question. Mark Andreko, you find yourself not only the favor, but also enjoying a one-point cushion over Drew McWeeny. So you will be giving us your preferred numbers first. One for the one-point lead, five for my five victories, and three for my three losses. Nice. I like that. Smart. What a numbers guy. All right, Drew McQueenie. Ten for, for, ten for my first son's age, 13 for my second son's age, and 18 for my girlfriend's age. Oh, oh, he went family. I thought you were going to say your girlfriend's age. <laughs> he went family with a joke Birthday. capper. If that, that was that. your girlfriend's age, I would let you win. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're going to start here. <laughs> Drew McQueenie will start here. He is down. He needs to hit his two-pointer here. Drew McQueenie, you chose category number 10. Classics. Not where I was leading. <laughs> Classics. All right, here you go. According to Humphrey Bogart at the end of Casablanca, what will he and Ingrid Bergman always have? Uh, Paris. Correct for two points. All right. They're always going to have Paris, and now Drew McWeeny has himself a lead, so we go over to Mark Andreko. Mark Andreko, you selected number one because you think you are the best. <laughs> it's a I'm two not point a mirror for question. you, Michelle. <laughs> and your question for two points, and to regain the lead over warm Coke drinking Drew is, <laughs> in The Greatest Showman, who plays Charity Barnum, the wife, to P.T.? Michelle Williams. Two Give points. two points. Back and forth. All right, so now we go back to Drew McWeeny with category number 13, action adventure. Action adventure. Okay, here you go. The Raid series takes place in which country? Indonesia. For three points. All there right. Okay. Three points, two-point lead, and now we go back to Mark Andreko. Mark Andreko, right. for your second question, for three points, you selected the number five. 
because that's how many golden rings you claim to own. And your question is... I'm wearing is, all five of them. Figure it out. <laughs> in the world of horror, <laughs> horror movies, your question is, what is the last name of the paranormal investigating couple in The Conjuring? Oh, um... Five, four, three, two, one. Repeat the question. What is the last name of the paranormal investigating couple in The Conjuring? Five. Yeah, I, I don't got it. Four, nothing? Nothing. We were looking for the Warrens. Warrens. Couldn't conjure the name of the Warrens, the people who put ghosts in houses in the first so place. So Mark Andrako has to hit his five-pointer here, or the Godfather will advance to the second round. Mark, what's he got? He has selected number three. Number three in the number of Mark Mosley corresponds to the category of Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise movies. And your question is, for five points and a lead at least for a time. Who plays the intimidating Winston Cup champion Rowdy Burns in Days of Thunder? Michael Rooker? He got five he got points wow, and he he's back it. on top. Wow. And Drew McWeeny can't help but smile. That's so, a hell of a, cool, hell of a pull, man. All right. Drew McWeeny here is now forced to hit his five. If he hits the five, he advances. If he misses it, Mark Andrako advances. We are down to the final question here, Mark. It is from category number 18, and that is in the category of biopics. 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 In Apollo 13, what was the flight surgeon concerned astronaut Ken Mattingly would come down with, dashing his hopes of joining the mission? A cold. And your winner, advancing to the next round, Mark the Android and Draco. The answer was the measles. The measles. The measles the was the answer. With measles. And then Draco it moves on here. A cold and the separation between the measles and the android will now be playing either Ben Bateman or Clark Wolf. Mark Andrako just beating McWeeny here, 21-18. What a battle it was. Yeah. That was a heavyweight championship fight. Mark Andrako advances to the second round now. The question is, who does he want to see? Does he want to see Ben Bateman, who he's beaten before, or does he want to go head-to-head -head with his stablemate, Clark Wolf? What an interesting match that would be, and we're going to find out the answers to that question and more with Jen Sturger. Here we go. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Drew, the Godfather McWeeny. Oh, Drew, it says something when you score 18 points and still somehow lose. Uh, you know, Mark and I were neck and neck, and it's the difference between two questions. Like, uh, in a match like that, that makes all the difference in the world. So I can't, I really can't be upset. Like, no. I feel like if I got the Robin and Marion question, but I missed the Marmaduke question, I, I'm okay with that. I can live with that knowledge. Yeah, I was going to say, fuck Marmaduke. <laughs> I feel like we both share that sentiment right now. Oh, but, you know, ultimately it came down to round three, and you just... I have clearly got to see Apollo 13 again. Yeah. Uh, it has been a while, and uh, yes, that movie is next up on my playlist. Not going to lie, I yeah. was on WebMD trying to figure out if yeah, I had the colder measles. That's definitely uh, happening very, very soon now. Oh, but... I mean, this has been such a crazy year for you. You know, you, you had such a great run in the team's tournament with Brianne, obviously beating the Patriots with Sam, holding the belts. I mean, what a year. Like, I know that this is the end of your season, but you, you have absolutely nothing to be ashamed about. It's okay. Yeah, it was all right. I, you know, it was, it, it's been an interesting season. I, uh, I, I've definitely learned a lot this year. Yeah. I, don't, I think one of the highlights for me this season was just seeing the look of joy on your face and just the shout that you gave out when you and Sam won the belt. I appreciate that. And that it really was my favorite moment so far in the Shimoda, not because of the win, but because it felt like I finished something I started. And that is uh, a big deal for me. So, you know, doing that with Sam was a great thing. But I, I there's a lot that I just haven't done yet. So. All right. Well... Like I said, this is the end of your season, but I really hope to see you back next season, and I really can't wait to see what's next for you. Mm, we'll see. Oh, wait, wait, I do have something for you. Um, someone told me 
that you liked cannolis? Uh, this is, <laughs> it's uh, the one and only. Thank her for me. All right. Thank her yourself. All right. Thanks, Brienne. All right. Take care. See you. And I'm back with Mark Andreco and the Five Club. All smiles. Yeah. Mark, you still look like you're in shock. <laughs> I, I really am. Like when, I, when I'm up against people like Ethan or Drew, who are so good, it wasn't false like, oh, I'm going to lose. I legitimately thought as long as I don't lose by too many points, that's a win. And when Christian stretched out at the end, and your win, I was like, I was like a slow motion. <laughs> and then he said me, and I was like, oh, he's just, he's just screwing with me. So I'm completely gobsmacked because, you know, in addition to Drew and I being been friends for almost as long as I've been in L.A., <laughs> he's an amazing player and has a wealth of knowledge that he's probably forgotten more than I know. So this is still kind of, this is even more shocking to me than Ethan. Do you think coming into these matches with the mindset of um, just taking one question at a time and not getting ahead of yourself and believing your own hype has helped you? Yeah, I think I've learned from watching great players and I've learned the strategy and I know that like uh, when uh, Snyder and I played Alonzo and Adichie and I did the graphic novel question, I knew that that was, it wasn't going to change the outcome, but I learned from strategy, you get a challenge, it throws off the rhythm of the other team, and I thought the question wasn't written correctly, because technically, I am correct, but, <laughs> but, I knew, but I knew that was a strategy thing, and I wouldn't have known that even six months ago, so it's become trying to play the game, but with this, you know, I just came in thinking, I'm just going to have fun, and this, this felt like why I joined Schmodown, because Drew and I both care about each other, we're both friends, we both respect each other, and... By the time we got to round three, we were what, we were 16, 16 or 16, 17. I was like, even if I miss all three questions, we got to a place I have nothing to be embarrassed about. It's funny, so. before we went out, we were actually joking that Andreco and Drew should just answer all of their questions wrong until the <laughs> final round, the two, the three, and the five. And ultimately, that is effectively what it boiled down to. Almost, I really yeah. thought you were you guys were gonna go tied into that last round. Yeah. And when, when Andreco spun thrillers, I, I was watching and I was like, Ah, he's going to keep that. He's going to keep that. And he totally nailed it. And it was still, even knowing how good he is in that category, it was still so exciting to watch. Absolutely. You know, I thought both of them were actually going to have a perfect round one. I yeah. was like, <laughs> yeah. before? Well, every time Ellis says that, it guarantees no one <laughs> Thank you, Ellis. Like, see the typhoid Mary. Well, and, perfect the, and the fact that between the two of you, you had the Charles Lee Ray answer correct was yeah. just so funny. It's great. Absolutely. <laughs> and then obviously, like you said, it came down to round three. Yeah. And now I think looking ahead in the tournament, you have a rough path ahead of you. Like as if facing a powerhouse like McWeeny yeah. wasn't bad enough for your first round. Next round, you're either going to face Ben Bateman, who you've faced multiple times. And beaten. And beaten. Mm -hmm. And beaten. <laughs> Or you're going to have to face your stablemate, Clark Wolf. You know, if I do have to face Clark, it's going to be a lot like this match. It's going to be two friends playing against each other in a, in a fun, as affectionate as a competition can be. And if I win or she wins, it's a win for the Fife Club. It's, yeah. a, it's a win. And if I play Ben, well, that's just practicing for who I'm going to beat the next round after him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no hugs in that match. Oh, and, you know, speaking of, of Ben Bateman, obviously, uh, Emma, you haven't been around lately, but there's been a little bit of smack talk. I don't know if you've yeah, heard I with hear Tom Dagnino. Tom Dagnino likes to just keep throwing my name out there. And I, I would like to point out that Tom Dagnino may think that he is a contender for manager of the year, but I would like to remind everybody that as soon as JTE and Snyder lost the team belts, Tom Dagnino abandoned them. Uh, I would never do that to my teammates here all of a sudden you know Tom Dagnino is representing Ben Bateman and Ben Bateman's the little golden boy well honestly Ben Bateman as a heel kind of pales in comparison to his own usual teammate Andrew Guy that's just my opinion but Tom Dagnino stop I don't care it's over we're going to beat you Clark is going to beat Ben and if she doesn't then Andrako is going to beat him this is this is not hard this is just science facts well you have that there um I guess all that's left is here's some cannolis for you guys. <laughs> Enjoy them. I mean, we'll take them. <laughs> Good luck in the next round. I cannot much. wait to see what happens. And once again, I do have to give one last shout out to Drew. He's an yes. awesome competitor. <laughs> and the only thing more impressive than how smart he is is what a nice guy he is. So yeah. this is a really nice moment. I'm sad I beat him because he's my friend, but it's a real sort of ego boost in the best possible way. So yeah. thanks, Drew.
I mean, very interesting there. Drew McQueenie obviously very upset. That's the end of his season right now. Tough he, run for a great competitor in this in league. In general, in this season, you look at what he has done. I mean, he, he is the him and Sam Levine are the only team to ever beat the Patriots twice. Mm -hmm. uh, they did that. He won the championship. He had an okay run in the teams and then, unfortunately, falling short here in the first round of the tournament. But he wants to come back. He's ready to come back. He's going to be ready for a new – maybe in the meantime he goes and visits Sam at Del Boca Vista. I hear Sam is doing great at lawn bowling. We will see. But then you look at Mark Andrew who's still in a state of shock as he has won. Every time he thinks he's not going to win, he winds up doing it, and he pulled off a hell of a victory here. That first round was incredible. They both had great second rounds. And what a test that is for a competitor early in the round to beat somebody like of the caliber of Drew McQueenie. Yeah. Now, I don't think he's going to fear either opponent. He may not want to play certain people because he has alliances, but he ultimately, like you said, wants to get to the spectacular. Mark Andreco does not fear anyone. He doesn't. And he, look, he said as much in the interview there that he was would be honored to play against Clark Wolf, who's part of the team champions. But he, you know, of course he doesn't want to do that, and he would love to get the opportunity to play Ben Bateman again and to beat Ben Bateman again. That's mm -hmm. something that he wants to do. So, and, and it is nice to see Emma Fife and Rachel and Mark and Draco back together again. Getting the band back together. Yeah, I mean, you see, Emma Fife is a hell of a manager. She, this is another victory for her this year. Her and Tom Dagnino are back and forth on the manager of the That's year. It's going to be a right big now. award. It's a big, big fight here, and they're both fighting, and she's got yet another person advancing. This is a hell of a year for Emma Fife as a manager. It's a hell of a year for Mark Andrico. He's now 4-1 and overall this year, and it's a well-earned victory, Mark. It was and a good fight. And it's a hell of a year for the movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon. We mentioned it during the match. Check it out right now. If you haven't already, select which tier is right for you. Make sure you check out all the Carnage recap on the Schmodown Rundown, and check out the movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page. Of course, that's on Twitter. And we'll see you for the next match, which is going to be the rookie sensation, the Cobra, Chance Ellison against Ethan Irwin. We'll see you next time. Come in. Hey, Kamish. It's hey, Commission. Chris. How are you, buddy? I'm great. How are, are you? you great? I was going to tell you. I just, as your friend, you seem a little stressed these days. You know? Yeah. I am a little stressed, but it's okay. I'm getting through it. Good. Uh, I, uh, thank you for coming over. Of course. Uh, I I just wanted to talk to you real quick because I've been feeling bad mm -hmm. because uh, la you you challenged me a while ago. A long time ago. A very long time ago, and I kind of dismissed you in hand. And I, it's been weighing on me. Oh. I don't. I feel like I, I feel like I dismissed you a little too quickly. Uh, I, I, I felt threatened, and I apologize. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about it. Been talking to uh, my therapist. Oh, my pills have been very large. But the, the point of the matter is, I've decided that I think it would be in my best interest as a human and as a commissioner, and best for the league if. We just go ahead and compete, put the commissionership on the line, and you and I can compete, and whoever wins will be the commissioner next year. This is unexpected. Yeah, so. So let me get it straight away. Yeah. So you're saying, me versus you, at the spectacular. Correct. Winner gets the commissionership, that's it. Yes, end of story, full stop. That's it. Yes. I don't know about that. What do you, why? I don't know. You, you've been asking for this for months. No, it seems a long time. I don't know, I'm, I'm having fun calling the matches. A lot less stress, not enough, no more people yelling at me really, no more knocking on my door and asking for stuff. And to be quite honest, it's really been fun to watch you sweat. Please. Please, that word, what's that word really mean these days, right? Please. Um, Just do the damn match. Say it again. Please. Can you sing it? Please. Uh, go I'm, I'm not too, that's too much. All right, I'll let you up, dog. One on one, but you got to make me a promise, though. You got no more Hawaiian shirts if I win ever again. Fine. Yes. All right, good. You got to shut the match. I'm going to kick your face in. I'm going to take it back and uh, I'll leave you back to her. So. That was a stupid move. Um, you dropped something on the floor. God damn it.
What's up, Shmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Down Breakdown. And your winner! First match, first round of the Singles League Tournament, and we are off to the races with Andrico and McWeeny. After one round of play, both locked up at six apiece, and that was a good sign for both of them as their average hovers around five points. Into the second round, Andrico takes Thriller and runs the board for all eight points. While Andrico has gone four for four three times previously in his career, this is just the second time he's earned all eight points. He previously did it in the category of 90s. As for Drew McQueenie trying to keep pace, he settles with the category of famous actors and actresses. He ends up going four for four as well, but just for seven points. McQueenie in his eight singles matches now has only missed five questions in his career pertaining to second round questions and has earned 77% of those points. Closing out the match in the final round, Andrico forced it back to McQueenie for a five pointer to win the game. And Lifetime, McQueenie coming into this match on five pointers was one for three, and all three times he had to answer a five pointer, the match resulted in a loss for him. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened here, and Mark Andrico wins by a score of 21 to 18. Going inside the numbers, not much separated these two on the day as both players answered 12 of 15 questions for 80% accuracy, but it was the difference of point values in the final round that decided this match. The combined 39 points for this match is the highest for a three round match since the Andrico Irwin match when they combined for 40 points. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter, and don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every Saturday on the Collider Podcast Network on YouTube and the Collider Factory Podcast Feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tiers in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.